What's up guys, my name is Eric from Foot Shop and you're tuning into our interview with the legends of the Australian hip hop, the Hilltop Hoods. So, guys, what's up? How you doing? Good man, we've just been um, just been traveling today, so we're a little worse for wear, but we're feeling good. This is this is a dope spot. Perfect. Okay, if you guys don't mind, we'll jump into fashion and shoes, if you don't mind. So, <laughs> so looking by your shoes, what is your favorite brand, guys? My favorite what's that? Your favorite brand. Oh man, probably rock mostly Adidas or Nike. I mean, yeah, same. I like I like Arachis for shows because it feels like you're wearing a second pair of feet, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's comfortable. They're very comfortable. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so per se, when you were growing up, were there any like shoes or brands that like influenced the way you dressed? I mean, I wore Adidas as a kid because of Run DMC, obviously. We had show. Well, I couldn't afford show toys, and my parents wouldn't buy me show toys. Your parents would buy you show toys, though, right? I never had show toys as a kid. What the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> hey. <laughs> okay, and uh, do you remember like what were your first real sneakers that you bought? Yeah, I got put. My parents bought me a pair of Nike Air Maxes '90s, and I got them rolled off my feet at the train station by some <laughs> by some older kids that were bad motherfuckers. You got robbed. <laughs> are you like a lot into sneakers or do you like collect sneakers or just not super into sneakers i like i've, I've got like uh five ten pairs of jays uh but yeah man mainly i go through show, shoes too quickly sneakers too quickly because of shows right <laughs> and what are your favorite jays fours fours yeah, yeah. you got the white summons yeah <laughs> nice. nice good one so, do you know what, uh, like the most expensive ones you got? I wouldn't have a clue. I did not know this interview was about sneakers. <laughs> <laughs> right. Okay. So, uh, how was the Aussie rap scene when you were coming up? What was like? What was popping back in the days? Um, the hip hop scene in Australia was pretty small when we were coming up. There was. The kind of the wave of dudes that went before us and girls were kind of like the pioneers in Australia, which would sort of be late 80s, early 90s, and we sort of fed off what they had done. And um, a lot of it, though, we had to sort of put our own shows on. There weren't there weren't really shows popping off in Adelaide, South Australia, where we're from. You just kind of had to make do with whatever we had and put our own gigs on for for the most part. Mm -hmm. And what made you guys come together and form a rap group? Me and Safa went to high school together basically, just loved hip hop and just started doing it for fun, sort of freestyling and writing joke raps about teachers and in parks and and whatnot. And uh, yeah, it just sort of became serious over the years. It's still not that serious. <laughs> uh -huh. So what was the main influence like uh, for rapping? Uh, for us, it was like New York rap. It was like Cool G Rap, KRS-One, EPMD. Uh, you know, Native Tongues, De La Soul, Tribe Called Quest, Black Sheep, um, sort of like the golden age of hip hop, I guess, Rakim, Nas, Jay. Okay. And um, regarding your fan base, uh, is like the most of the support coming from uh, from Australia or like around the world or like where is like, where it gets like most intense, like for example, when you're playing shows? We do the best back home. Um, Germany's great for us. Uh, Canada is great for us. Uh, was, you know, we're starting to tour more often in the States. Um, places here and there, Switzerland, New Zealand, but yeah, UK. UK. But mainly, yeah, Australia is our strongest, strongest market for sure. Mm -hmm. Okay. And um, who does your beats? Who is your beat master? Mix of people. I do a lot of the beats. Um, local producers back home, one above. Um, our homie trials, um, bunch of people. We mix it up. Okay. Uh, I have some question about the restrung project. Sure. So how did you get to it? Like, what well, did somebody came in like tell, hey, let's do like you know some classical music with with rap or? Uh, I don't. I don't know. We did a we did our first restrung project in about two thousand and eight. I think. Um, f I think. The Adelaide Symphony Orchestra got in contact with us about sort of a spot project, and we kind of 
didn't end up doing it, but we got in contact with them later to remix our record, The Hard Road, with us. And uh, then 10 years later, we, well, eight years later, we did it again with the Walking Under Stars, Drinking From The Sun project. And then, um, yeah, I don't know, this is something that we, I guess we've always had a lot of strings, a sort of big moody sort of production in our music. And we jumped at the chance to work with the Symphony Orchestra just to kind of enhance that and make it more epic. That was great, yeah. It's very expensive though. Orchestras are very expensive. <laughs> yeah, it was worth it. It was an amazing experience for sure. Uh -huh. And do you have like uh, any one of you like connection with classical music or that just happened like randomly? No connection. No, no connection. <laughs> <laughs> no connection. Okay, and uh, are you planning on doing something similar like not with classical music but something like in the future like a collab with a different style? I mean, we're always sort of changing up what we do a little bit every album. We'll probably work with some string quartets for the next record. We're kind of just starting to make a new record when we when we get home back to Australia. Um, but we're we're always trying new things. So yeah, we'll see where that takes us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We haven't thought about it that much, if we're honest. <laughs> <laughs> but you personally want to stick to rap. You don't want to branch out somewhere oh, like yeah. Yeah. somewhere else. Okay. Uh, for me, for example, I got to know you with the, the BMX, the Flatland video with, uh, with the Nolte uh, section. Yeah, yeah. How did that happen? That was just like fan art or somebody you know of made it? Yeah, it was just a, a, a flat rider that put it up and we didn't ask to take it down and now it's at some stupid amount of views. And I, uh, I you know, if we ever meet that guy, uh, Simon, I forget his last name. But we owe him a drink. That's <laughs> Simon. Yeah, what's up? <laughs> okay, uh, are you planning on? Um, are you working on some new music right now? Because I kind of lost track. Uh, like I said, we like I've been building a studio. We've we've uh, just finished our last restrung tour last year, and we took a bit of a break. So we're about to get back into it when we get back home from this tour. So yeah. yeah I mean, we are we are working on new music. It's just like. It's very early stages. We don't have anything finished yet that could be played or whatever. Uh huh. Yeah. Is there some like rapper or artist you want to collab with in the future? I don't know. You never you never say it in an interview in case like it doesn't happen or <laughs> or, the, or they don't want to work with you. <laughs> okay. Um, are there any artists, rappers that you really like at the moment that you like follow and listen? Yeah, the new Kendrick album's wild. The new Joey Badass record is wild. Um, uh, Jadina. Um, yeah, our, a lot of our crew have brought records out back home, like AB Original, um, Horror Show. Yeah, there's a, there's a lot. There's a lot to listen to at the moment, which is a mumble rap. <laughs> 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 That's not like a real thing. It's just like what we say. Well, the you know, haters say call it mumble rap, but like it's it's not an official genre. But right, right. I don't hate him. I think I think those kids of a lot of those kids are classic. <laughs> are you keeping track with like the underground rap, for example? Um. Yeah, I guess so. Like you know, like uh, heads like your old Droog and and stuff like that. Um, and Action Bronson, I don't know whether you call him underground or anything anymore, but like we uh, listen to a lot of that because, you know, it speaks to sort of the 90s music that we grew up on. And for example, Bones, Puyo, or the Suicide Boys? Man, <clears throat> I'm a bit out of touch. I'm going to be... Gonna be <laughs> okay, okay. That was where I was kind of heading with the underground because that's, right. what, that's what's popping with the young kids nowadays. Gotcha, right. Okay. What about the tour? So uh, this is uh, like the third, second concert on the tour, or you just came to Europe, or? Uh, I think this is our fifth show. Fifth just show. done, what, three three in Germany, uh, Wuha Festival in our Tilburg, Netherlands. Uh -huh. And then here, yeah, number five. I think we've got nine, nine shows in this tour. We're still in a short run this time. Yeah, but our first time in Prague. Uh -huh. yeah. yeah. First time? Oh, yeah, first time. yeah. We stopped here for lunch once. <laughs> 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 We've never played here before though, we're excited. Okay, and how's it going so far? Beautiful city, yeah, love it, but like uh, like I said, we only got in this afternoon, so we just sort of popped in, 
had a nap and now we're here. <laughs> <laughs> what was the craziest show so far? Um, I want to say Hamburg. Hamburg was loose, yeah. Hamburg, Hamburg was lit. So hopefully, hopefully tonight can outdo that. <laughs> You're going to tease something new, for example, or just bring nah, the classics? Or? We've, we've got a mix. We've got a mix of tracks. It's, you know, from everything from Restrung back to an old album of ours called The Calling. So we've got a full mix. Yeah. Okay. You got it when you're doing it like hour and a half. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, that's everything from me. Thank you guys for the interview. Thanks, and Alex. I'll be looking out for the show. No worries. Thank Peace. you, man. Take